Hi you guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be my labor and delivery vlog. The video is gonna start once I'm actually in the car on my way to the hospital because, I mean, I'm a first time mom, so of course this is my first labor and delivery. And I really technically went into labor, I believe, when my water broke around 1.15 in the morning. But because, uh oh, baby girl's nursing right now. Are you done? Are you done, mama? She might be done. If she's done, I need to burp her. Hold on, now she's burping. <laughs> I'm currently um 10 days postpartum. I gave birth 10 days ago. But what I was saying is that since this is my first baby, first pregnancy, first ever everything I did not know I mean it should be common sense to call my midwife once my water breaks but because of the whole situation that happened with me finding out last minute like a week and a half to almost two weeks before I, yeah, I went into labor that I was more than likely having to give birth at a hospital instead of at the birthing center like I originally planned I was trying to mentally prepare myself for a hospital birth so at my last appointment with my midwife I was asking a bunch of questions about hospital birth instead of what to do when I go into labor and and I completely just, I don't know what happened, but I didn't know I was supposed to call her as soon as my water broke. So my water broke at like 1.15 in the morning. And when it broke, I still wasn't sure that it broke because it happened like in increments. Around 1.15, I had like a first gush and I was just like, hmm, what is this? And I went to the bathroom and then I put on like a pad just in case it happened again because I wasn't sure. Because at first I was like, is this just like a bunch of discharge? Honestly, like I didn't know. And then like 15 minutes later, it was like another gush. And then like 20 minutes after that second gush, it happened again so I was like okay and then I went to the bathroom that third time and then I noticed there was like pinkish clearish fluid in the toilet and I'm like okay I think this is my water breaking so then I text my midwife and I text my doula and I was just like hey I'm not sure but I think my water broke and then shortly after I text them I started to feel cramped and I was just like okay I think I'm in labor but I still let my partner continue to sleep until like 3 30 in the morning until like contractions started to pick up because at first it just felt like period cramps and then it started to like get more intense and then I was like, okay, yeah, I think this is it. But I still wasn't sure that I was supposed to call my midwife. And I don't know why, because I just remember her telling me specifically call her once my contractions or she either said call her, but I think what she said is head to the birthing center or head to the hospital once my contractions are three minutes apart, lasting about a minute long. So I was waiting for that cue and I had my partner like timing my contractions for me because I was just, I wasn't able to time them myself. So you guys wanna see? Oh. Can I see her? <laughs> Little baby girl Felicity. But yeah, so since I didn't know I was supposed to call her, I just ended up laboring at home until like 8.50 in the morning whenever my midwife finally called me. First my doula called me. She was like asking me questions and then she determined that I was having rectal pressure. But she didn't mention it to me. I guess maybe she didn't want me to like panic. And then she talked to my midwife and my midwife called me and let me know what was going on. She was just like, okay, my doula, she said you're feeling rectal pressure, your water broke, and da da da. And and my midwife, because I went into labor the day after Easter, she was out of town visiting her family. So she wasn't like readily accessible to come to me. And because I didn't call her right away, because if I called her, she would have been able to be on her way right away. But because I didn't call her right away, like I text her, her phone didn't notify her. Like she, and she told me that too. She was like, if there's ever an emergency, call me, don't text me. But like I said, I just, yeah, I don't know what happened, but I didn't call her. So when she finally called me, she told me to check my blood pressure. My blood pressure was still high. It was out of the parameter of the out of hospital birth which is um it's over 140 over 90 you can't give birth out of hospital out of hospital in the state of texas so because my blood pressure was higher than that she was just like okay you need to head to the to the hospital right now and we still waited a little while before we left the house because we still needed to feed the dogs wrap things up throw a couple of things in my bag because i wasn't sure what i needed for a hospital birth versus a birthing center birth so i kind of just got my bag together and all the stuff i put in my bag i didn't even need anyways that's neither here nor there so the clip that you guys will see once you guys see me in labor, us in the car and being on our way to the hospital. By the time I got to the hospital, you guys, I was already five centimeters dilated. <laughs> so there's that, I was halfway there. So that explains why things were getting intense so quickly. But I did practice breathing ahead of time. So that helped me get through my contractions. And I also had a wooden comb in my hand that I was using as like counter pressure or like to help distract me while I was having my contractions and doing my deep breathing. And to me, I feel like the comb helped because it's just like a mental thing. And then and like shortly after I was 
at the hospital, they checked my cervix again and I was six centimeters dilated. Once I was finally in the labor and delivery room, I went from six centimeters dilated to 10 centimeters dilated. And I believe that was all in one contraction because I remember they, they told me I was 6.1 centimeters dilated. They left the room, came back. I had a very, very, very intense contraction that was like almost unbearable. Like that was like at the peak of the pain that I felt during labor besides whenever I was actually pushing. Like those were my two peaks as far as pain intensity. I didn't get either one of those things on camera. Right before I got ready to push the baby out, they let me know that I could not record the actual delivery itself. They could only take photos. So I didn't have that clip. Labor was kind of long, so I didn't get that really intense contraction either on camera. Regardless, I'm pretty sure I went from six to 10 in one because when they came back, I guess that they were monitoring me while they were out of the room and they ended up coming in the room right after I had that really intense contraction. Checked my cervix again and they were like, yeah, you're 10, it's time to start pushing. But I believe they probably had me start pushing too soon because they had me start pushing I was pushing for a while and then they ended up coming back in the room and you guys will see all this stuff but I'm explaining some of it because a lot of the stuff is not like explained in the video so I'm giving you guys a little bit of context so once you guys are watching the footage it makes sense so I was 10 centimeter dilated and let me know it was time to start pushing they coached me through that and then they came back in the room like af after it was just me the nurse and my doula and my man in the room pushing 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 they came back and checked everything and they were like okay baby's struggling to get out because uh, there was still like a lip of service left that I was kind of swollen so so the baby was struggling to get past that so it was like I was pushing but the pushing wasn't like progressing things for a while because she was just hitting that little they said it was like a really tiny little I don't know how to explain it but that's just the way they explained it to me um so then they had to I love her I just love her but yeah so they um they had me stop pushing that was so hard to stop pushing after you already start pushing because you feel so much pressure in your your booty like it literally feels like there's like a sharp pain like just something trying to come out of your butt like it's obviously it's your vagina but it feels like it's trying to come out of your butt like it's the weirdest feeling I don't even know how to describe it I had to stop pushing and you guys will see I was very quiet during my labor because I was really just breathing through it I wasn't like yelling and stuff there was moments where I got a little loud but I don't think we have the footage of that like where I was actually loud but and even whenever I was loud it was more like a like that because I was really just trying to breathe it out because I don't know you know like in the movies um when you see those videos of people like in labor and they're like ah! I always joked about not wanting to do that and I always like joked about like not wanting to have a labor where they were like yelling push so they were very calm like well, even when they were telling me push they'll be like okay push 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 or they would just be like okay push they were very calm and that was also something that I talked to them about I wrote my birth plan but that part wasn't in my birth plan and then I just mentioned that to the two of them that I didn't want anybody like intensely telling me to push I just wanted it to be as calm as possible so yeah I think that's all the things I wanted to touch bases with you guys on she back there in labor oh my crotch in between contractions it's painful it looked painful that's the one thing I specifically said don't say. What? I painful? Know it's painful. What you say? Oh yeah, don't say painful when you in labor. You do this, you got this. That makes you a bad uh, guy. Like obviously it's painful. I know it hurts. You handle it uh, gracefully. Mm. Precious thing. Precious, precious thing. Good job. <laughs> I thought I was giving birth at the birthing center, but I'm on my way to the hospital. The you got your GPS on? but because of high blood pressure that came out of nowhere like two weeks ago or something like that i didn't know that to give birth at a birthing center your blood pressure needs to be within a certain parameter and i'm outside of that so yeah there's that trying to thug it out my water broke at one o'clock or 1 15 this morning started to break i don't know if it just broke or if it's like a slow break i don't know how this shit fucking works but um it's now about 10 o'clock and we are on our way to the hospital. Luckily, we are going to a better hospital than the one that my original OB was connected to. So we're on our way there now. In between contractions, I feel like a normal human being. But when the contractions come, I feel like exorcism, honestly. I'm trying to breathe through them. <laughs> trying to say my positive affirmations in my head. You can do this. You're built for this. Your body and your baby knows exactly what to do breathe but yeah feels very intense now the real question is are we doing this natural <laughs> man because this shit gets rough i really don't want to get epidural i really don't no and it does like a lot of people experience long-term effects with epidural and it could slow down the process as well so there's just that
recording and it just came on, so I just. Ooh. That one wasn't too bad. It was bad, but it was a shorter one. Well, now she's in labor at the hospital. Baylor, that's the brand. So if anything happens, y'all come for them. She's doing okay. She's having contractions. This is a training hospital too. Like a, that was like a training situation for sure. Yeah, it's like a new guy. <laughs> but I had to go around twice, so I've seen that this place is like a campus, like a big old. Training hospitals are good hospitals too. Oh, is that what the exfoliation treatment? Ah. No, you just got an exfoliation treatment because I told you it's a spot. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I didn't know that. So this can get wet, but it can't be submerged. So if you want to go in the bathtub, just let me know. Oh, that's an option. It is an option. Okay. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I just mm -hmm. have the joke about stuff. It makes me feel good. I don't know. <laughs> How you feel? Okay, right now. Right now, I'm good. During contractions, I'm okay. Figure it out. <laughs> Got you. And Look at you projecting your voice really quick. In active camera. labor. Did Overall, we're really impressed with this hospital. I just keep thinking how grateful I am for you. Thank you. <laughs> Very I grateful. Really appreciate indeed. you. It's truly my pleasure. Oh, that tastes way better. And since you don't have the fluids, I need to keep more drinking. Keep drinking. Right? Yeah. If that position is causing more contractions, it's probably a better position to be in. Huh? But you can do whatever you want to. If your body's saying sit on the ball for a while, then do that. If your body says move and do something else, do that. Ooh. I don't know how hard I'm supposed to push. Right here where I'm pressing, that's where I want you to focus all your energy, okay? Try to like push your hands out. Yeah. That makes sense. I'm gonna feel kind of which way baby's facing, so that's okay. Ow! Sorry, Brenda. When you feel that contraction, you just push down. Remember, your breath is your power. So take a big deep breath in, deep hold breath. your breath, and then push down to wherever your fingers are. And you just push as hard as you can. You want to focus your push down through your bottom. I think your effort's good. We need to redirect where you're pushing. You know when you're really constipated and you push really hard to poop? Exact same as that. I'm trying not to do that too much, so. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and now we're telling you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Hold your breath and push down, down, down. Strong. Grab this Good. Hold it. Three, four, five. Stronger. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Yes. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Man. Oh, you're trying to do it right. I, you're making progress. It takes a while to kind of figure it out for you, um, especially this first time. So whatever feels natural to you, that's kind of what we'll do. Feels like it goes back when you um, when you're in this position, but it's like baby's head is hitting against it when you're kind of squatting up. I think it would be probably better to take like a 30 minute break from pushing if you feel like you can, and see if that cervix will go away. I'm getting really sensitive with you pushing against it. Look who's here! I'm so grateful for you guys. Yeah. Like you literally leaning over. I knew you were gonna do that. 
<laughs> I just knew it. <laughs> Papa Ray and baby Felicity. He's singing her, singing her to sleep. I can't even think, I'm a little disoriented. And then the water that I earned for my natural labor. <laughs> That's what she said when she dropped me off. She said that I earned this water. And then this is the mommy menu for breakfast or lunch. No, lunch I think for breakfast. And then they gave me a little snack pack. I don't know what's in there yet. My snack pack, ooh, okay. It looked like some good stuff was in there. Okay, I'm excited because I'm hungry. <sighs> what you looking at, honey? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how much footage I have. I don't know if I'm gonna make a video of the actual labor, if I'm just gonna update you guys, I don't know. But yeah, I took it like a champ, neuropodural natural labor i did eventually get pitocin but i was already 10 centimeters dilated so i got pitocin to help push the contractions closer together um yeah i literally yeah i did a lot of practice breathing before you so quiet like at the end like the ones that i know hurt it you just like yeah quiet. i did a lot of practice breathing Morning, baby girl. She's taking a little nap. So this is her long stretch nap. She's been asleep for a while now. And I'm trying to eat a little bit. So pretty. Look at my pretty baby girl. Whew. I feel good. I really do. I feel good, you guys. Like I said, I don't know how much I'm going to share. So I'm just taking a couple of clips with the hopes to make a little vlog for you guys. But I feel good. I'm proud of myself. I was able to labor naturally in epidural. Originally, I was feeling very, very discouraged because I really wanted to give birth at the birthing center. But my blood pressure was high or too high for an out-of-hospital birth. So I ended up having to give birth at the hospital. But this hospital is really good. I definitely recommend them if you're like in the DFW area. It's the... Baylor Scott and White, yeah, Baylor Hospital for labor and delivery. The nurses were amazing. I should be going home tomorrow morning, I think they said, but yeah, I feel good. I'm still a little tired, but overall I feel pretty good. I might try to take a nap while she's napping because she's still asleep. I tried to wake her up to feed her and she wasn't having it, so I'm just gonna let her sleep for now, but she has been latching pretty good, nursing. Up until just recently, she was nursing about every two to two and a half, three hours. Sometimes a little sooner than that too, so maybe she's just full, but um, yeah. <laughs> I'll try to keep you guys updated. I feel good. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> mm, it feels so good. I kind of rub that around. Oh, good. Perfect. Smell that. Oh. Junk. <laughs> she's like, oh, that feels nice. <laughs> <laughs> We're finally getting discharged. I have not been recording because I've just been enjoying the moment with oh, little baby girl. Her beanie fell off. A cry right now. Her and little beanie moment. fell off. She is the most beautiful thing. <laughs> but we're finally getting discharged. Yeah, you can't eat that. What are you doing, mama? It's not food. <laughs> I'm going home in pajamas because that's the best thing for me to do. Crooked camera. <clears throat> I feel good. Nah, nah, nah. Let me tell y'all, she did a natural birth, no drugs, no epidural. She was breathing through her contractions. There was like, you're at 10. And I was like, oh shit. It got real, huh? Yeah, we're getting ready to leave. I think she's hungry, so I'm gonna breastfeed her, nurse her again. I just wanna give you guys a little update because I really haven't been filming. I just kept forgetting. But yeah, I feel good. I took a shower this morning at like seven o'clock. My first shower since I gave birth. Amazing. Yeah, gotta go. <laughs> Pretty good to me. What do you think? Smell good? We're on the way home now from See, Baylor Hospital. That makes it better. First car ride home. Baby girl is sleeping. She just fed. She had clean diaper. She's peaceful. Tell them a little bit about Baylor Hospital. You said tell them about Baylor Hospital. They're amazing. Your experience there. They did a great job with everything. Come to think about it, I probably could have took that swaddle because <laughs> they didn't even. Care. They didn't even check the room, but they said we couldn't take the swaddle. It was a really soft swaddle, so I was like, I need one of those. She always does the right thing. Here, give me that. Ugh. Give me that. Use the right two lanes to keep right onto Gaston Avenue. 
baby girl is sleeping. First car ride home. So peaceful. That precious little baby. Her beanie is too big for her. But yeah, so that was my labor and delivery vlog. I can definitely say after going through that experience that labor was definitely a spiritual experience. I'm just really grateful for the entire experience. I'm grateful for that hospital. I'm grateful for my doula, my partner. Like my partner was really amazing throughout the entire labor. It's so funny because he had said he was like, I'm so surprised you weren't yelling at me. He said I was so calm. I was like, you thought I was going to yell at you? He's like, yeah, that's what they show in the movies that's what he was expecting was for me to be yelling at him and being mad at him i think there was only like one moment but not really like i was just kind of like shh he was like trying to ask me a question while i was having a contraction i think that was the only time during labor that i kind of yelled at him that was not a yell that's a shh but in the house in the house before we got ready to leave i felt like he was lollygagging <laughs> um so i was just like you're not moving with a sense of urgency hurry up so that was the only time but for the most part i was calm throughout the entire thing okay you guys so that is it for this labor and delivery vlog i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure you give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel so you guys can be notified every time i upload a new video make sure you turn your post notifications on comment down below any other newborn or any type of video suggestions you guys might have for me and yeah thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate you guys i love you and i will see you in the next video bye you guys bye.